Anthony, great to meet you. It's uh, Anthony Chaffee from Ballyhoo. I'm going to hand this over to you, Anthony, straight away to introduce us to your business, please. Hi. Yeah, um, I'm Anthony from Ballyhoo. Um, so we are a digital agency based in in, in the Midlands. Um, what that means to anybody not aware, that means we do uh, branding work. Uh, we build brands for companies. We do web design. Uh, web development, and then we provide um, digital marketing and um, promotion of websites and services beyond that, and um, product support as well, uh, which is a big part of, of what we do. Great. Fantastic. Around 14 years. Absolutely. Me. Yes. So we've we've just, just had our 14th birthday, um, which is quite exciting. It's a, it's a really big milestone for us. Um, yeah. I personally, I've been in, in the industry for, for over 20 years, so um, pretty much as long as it has been an industry um, from when, when the web became a sort of uh, marketing tool for businesses, really. So I've been there pretty much from, from its inception as an industry. Great. So um, the dark art of what you do, because lots of people look at it and go, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about what makes you stand out from the other people who are doing that. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's 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 an odd industry, and there's, there's very little barrier to to entry. There's, um, you know, we we always talk about the the kids in their bedrooms making websites, and and we we're often asked if we're if we're competing with these. Um, also, you know, there's there are build your own website tools that are that are available now. Um, that's not the market that we're in. So we we do even quite happily direct uh, potential customers to to these build your own uh, website tools. If they're, if they're a very small business, if they're starting up, they don't necessarily know what they want. They, they just want their website presence for the sake of it. They just want to tick a box. Then, you know, we, we're happy to, to recommend uh, tools that they can use and do that for us. So for us, um, we're, we're looking to work with businesses that are really trying to promote and, and build their business and grow their business. Um, and they want to use the web as, as a tool, as a marketing tool, um, which then becomes a lot more complicated. It's easy, it's easy to build a, a website. Uh, to build a successful website is a lot more difficult. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot more to learn. There's a lot more to figure out uh, in terms of what you're trying to achieve, who your target audience is, um, how are you going to convert um, visits to a website to actual leads and conversions. Um, it gets a lot more complicated. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting industry. Um, we very much positioned ourselves not to be competing with uh, with the likes of the, the kids in their bedrooms and the, uh, the build your own website tools. Yeah, great. So um, th that's kind of what you're not competing with. What That makes you different from a bunch of people, the kids in their bedrooms, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Um, what would make you different, would you say, from the guys who are doing a similar kind of offering? It tends to be our level of sort of after-sales support. Um We've we've always been very keen to do that. We've all, I mean, I've, I've got customers that I have been working with since that that you know the twenty years ago when I started in the industry. So, mm. we, I'm very proud to be working with those people. Um, you know, we we do like to support these businesses and be with them as they grow, um, mm. and be part of that growth and actually direct that growth. Um, but it's always it's always been it's always been a logical thing for us to do. Really support the customers so we can we can stick with them and grow. When a lot of our competitors don't seem to do that very well um we regularly pick up projects that have that have gone gone awry because of a failed relationship with a developer um developers that have not promised have not they've, they've over promised under delivered um or just just done done the build made their money and just and, and they move on that's that's their business strategy mm -hmm. um our strategy has always been uh, to, to to maintain those long-term relationships and as technologies change we're in a brilliant position then to to communicate with customers there's this new technique we can use there's this new technology we can use um and we can hopefully uh, help them grow and, and stay up to date rather than you know make make a few quid and move on um it's been a strategy that's worked really well for us um and it's 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 actually surprised us how um how few of our competitors seem to have the same strategy actually um but it's yeah that that would be that would be a big one for us it's a surprise to, to us more than more than anyone um seems like a very logical thing to do but but yeah our customer support has, has really paid dividends over the years right okay cool that makes it pretty clear thank you so around 14 years just had the birthday absolutely um, wait 
a lot to reflect on, but also a lot of future ahead. So wh- where's the business going? What, what's the what's the plan? Um, so yeah, we've we've been we've been growing every year for those fourteen years. We've, we're still a small, very compact, efficient team. Um, so really, it's it's all about efficiencies for us. We're we're not necessarily looking to you know exponentially grow the business, but we we are constantly looking at ways to improve efficiencies. So um, that's often looking at new tools that we can use, um, uh, things that we can adapt. Mm. Um, AI is is a massive deal for us at the moment. We're we're seriously concentrating on that. So we have uh, you know j- junior developers that are actually able to use uh, tools that will really help them learn quickly um, and and develop things a lot more a uh, lot lot quicker than they traditionally would. Um, things like copywriting, content generation, using AI to help um, speed things up there. Um, there. There's a lot of challenges involved with doing that and doing it properly and doing it right. Um, but there's 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 some huge opportunities, I think, to 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 adapt. Be, being a small team and being a you know a highly mobile team, we can quite quickly adapt and use these new technologies. So that's uh, that's our main focus at the moment. We can see we can see a significant growth in the business without actually expanding the team, but adopting some of these new technologies that are that are quite exciting. It's genuinely interesting to us. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you move in a fairly fast-paced, changing world. Well, we all do, but yours might be <laughs> a little bit faster, I guess. Um, so what would you say the biggest learning has been for you as a business owner in the past 14 years? Yeah, absolutely. Um, for me, I think it's come down to to building this core team that we have here. So um, it's, taken, it's taken a long time for me to really understand myself and understand what I'm good at and what I'm not necessarily good at. Um, I've always been okay at everything and not necessarily very good at any one thing. Um, so what I've done is, as over the years, built a team of um, sort of niche specialists. So I have I have a very very talented developer who understands the technologies. I have a very talented graphic designer who understands um, you know current trends in in UI and UX. Um, I have a very talented marketing manager who understands yeah you know how to promote a business and the technologies and tools that 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 can can be used there. Um, so just building that that team that that sort of complement my skill set uh, where I where I might fall down, I'm quite happy to to defer decisions to to staff members that I that I know are are experienced and uh, are more knowledgeable than me in in certain areas. So I don't try and do it all. Um, try and leave it to to the experts, and 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 we have plenty of those here already. Good. Yeah, that is a good learning. Um... <laughs> Um, it's it's amazing actually isn't it i mean i speak to a lot of people about this and um some people find it quite difficult to put stuff down even though yeah. they're not particularly strong at it which is interesting it's, it's really tough yeah it's really tough i mean particularly in terms of development i i started as a developer really i come from a very technical background with a degree in computer science mm. um i'm a decent developer um but it was once i you know once we got busy and we needed needed more support in that area i bring in developers and i think Christ, they're good. They, you know, they are much better than me. Um, I'm able to have conversations with them and, and discuss, the, you know, the technology and the approaches that we should should be using. Um, but yeah, sometimes they blow me away with with what they actually produce, and I I know that I would never have come to to you know to that sort of solution. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting, but it's it is difficult. Uh, it's yeah. difficult to accept sometimes, but it's yeah. it's it's effective. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> what would you say the biggest challenge has been then? Um, yeah, one thing, one thing I always say is, um, yeah, learning to not let perfect get in the way of good. Um, I I am a perfectionist. I want everything to be perfect. Um, but I think often that that has been a bit of a barrier. So, um, yeah, learning to, to maybe produce things that are, that are very good, but they're not perfect. Um, but get them out into the industry, get, get them out and see, see how they perform, uh, and be in a position to measure and adjust, um, to, to, to feedback. Um, that's, yeah, that's, that's the biggest one for me. Um, again, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's, it's it, like I said, it, you know, it's difficult to, to put things down sometimes, uh, you want them get to get them to be absolutely perfect. And it, and it has done us well over the years by, you know, that, that perfectionist approach. Um, 
but yeah, there, there is a, you've got to learn to, to find the right level, um, at which point you can, you can get something to market, um, get it out there and learn from feedback rather than continually making assumptions and, and pouring over data, trying to figure something out that you can, you can potentially learn much quicker by getting something to market and, and measuring. Great. Okay. So if you were having a conversation with your 18 year old self, um, with the knowledge you have now, um, and that eighteen-year-old self was prepared to accept it. <laughs> we should caveat that, shouldn't we? That's, yeah, that's the trouble. Yeah. Um, what would you say? Um, what would you do differently if you had your time again with the knowledge you've got now? Yeah, I think I think that does come back to my last answer. Really, it's it's about failing fast. Um, Again, this this applies to not just me, but to our customers as well. We've we've worked with startup businesses that they spend a lot of time deliberating, maybe even speaking to potential customers and trying to to learn um, and build the perfect product. Mm. Um, they then listen to feedback before something is launched, and you know they'll have one person say, oh, "I'd be interested in that if it did this," um, and then they take that as a, an absolute essential feature of functionality they need to build. Um, for me, I think, yeah, I, I don't really like the the, the phrase "failing fast." Um, feels feels scary to me um but in reality getting something to market getting something out there quickly um and learning from feedback is 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 really essential it can often be quicker to to produce a prototype get it out to market and learn from the feedback um it can be quicker to do that whole process than deliberate for many months over trying to work out the best approach and you may get it wrong anyway in fact you probably will get it wrong anyway um <clears throat> so get it out there do your best obviously we, we you know we have to make assumptions but we can do your best and yeah. uh, learn as much as you can but uh yeah fail fast cool yeah good um and what's the one piece of advice you'd give to other business owners um that that's it really um yeah, again, we, we work with a lot of startup businesses. Um, we work with businesses, you know, in all sorts of industries. Um, and we, we work best with businesses where we do work with them from day one. So they're, they're, they they have an idea um, and we can be there to guide them in terms of in terms of that brand image that they, they may need to develop um, in terms of the technical aspects and the technical tools they're going to have to build and what's what is their good strategy going to be to get to market with with our niche experience in in uh, in digital. Um, so that's it, really. Get get out there. Fail fast. Um, you know, do your best if you've got an idea. We, we've seen businesses that have failed to be first to market because they've taken so long over deliberating and trying to find the, the perfect solution. Um, and it's been painful to watch from the sidelines and trying to guide them towards, we, we talk about the MVP, the minimum viable product um, for a lot of projects. And it's mm -hmm. very difficult uh, from our perspective, working with a client to convince them that your idea is good just think about what needs to be the first phase of that development and get it out there. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult when they have such ambitions and such big ideas. Uh, yeah. They want it all. They want it all out there. They want to do it all. Um, scale it back and think about think about that minimum viable product and get that done to a good standard. Um, hopefully with a team like us that, that will will have the experience to guide you. Um, but yeah, get something out there and see how it performs and learn from it. Cool. Really good insight. Thank you. So um, lots of great stuff around your business, lots of great stuff around what you do. Obviously, your details are there. <laughs> um, but in terms of next steps, if uh, what you've said today has resonated with people and they want to get in touch, what, what would the next steps be, Anthony? Um, so, yeah, our, our, our approach is... is you know, it's a very consultative approach, really. <clears throat> Everything we do is, is is bespoke and it's tailored to to how a customer operates, what they're doing, what their what industry they are in. Um, so really, um, we we're very open to to having you know early dialogue. As I said, we we work with business right from the outset. Um, yeah, free, no obligation conversations is is how we do things. We we're very honest and open, and that does um, you know that does play out in our in our customer support and ongoing relationships. So, mm. more than happy to talk to anybody, and we will happily direct them to 
tools and technologies that may not be for us um if that's the best thing that we we see for for anybody we speak to really but if we see an opportunity where we can really help um then then we can continue the conversation but i'm more than happy to talk to anybody um in any any industry any business size um and happy to advise and use use my knowledge as much as you can Bob, great thank you no problem um, great to meet you today thank you Wish you, you too a very um, successful next 14 years and however long after that. Absolutely. Thank you. There we go. Um, and uh, thanks for your insights about business and all your tips and tricks, if you like. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Take care. Cheers.